So now that we have our two players working, we want to be able to keep track of score and detect if a player has won. So what we need to do is detect if the ball has hit one of the left or right walls, in which case one of the players scores a point. So let's go back to this game scene. We'll tap on the ball and enter its behaviors. And we want to be able to detect a collision. So this will be the collision with the left wall. And this will be the collision with the right wall. In these cases, we want to broadcast a message. If the ball hits the left wall, then that means the right player scored a point. So we're going to broadcast player to scored. And likewise, if the ball hits the right wall, that means the left player has scored a point. So we'll say player one scored. And then after that, we're going to reset the ball position. So we can do set velocity. We'll set velocity to zero. We're going to move back to the center of the screen so that's in percentage, 50%, 50%. And we're going to set this duration to zero. And then we're going to broadcast another message saying that we've reset the the game. So we'll just say broadcast reset. Now we're going to go back to our wait, which is what runs at the start of a game. We want this also to run when the game is reset. So let's put a receive message and reset. So now this is called when we're resetting, but we also want this to be called the first time we play, which is not a reset. So all we're going to do is just add a behavior bundle. So now we have the ball's position resetting when a score is point a point is scored or when a new game is started. And in both cases, it waits three seconds before the ball starts moving. Since we're now broadcasting when a player is scored, let's actually create a scoreboard. So let's go back and let's go back to grid view. We can go to special object and create a label. Let's start this label. as zero. We can set that font size to 72, font color to white. And then what we can do is add a behaviors. And what we're looking for is to receive a message that player one has scored. So we'll do receive message, player one scored. So when we get that message that player one has scored, we want to add to the score. And we're going to increase by one. And the game ends when we get to 11. When the game ends, we want to go to a game over screen. So let's do load overlay. And we can use that default game over 
that comes with the project. You can pick a transition. And now we have our score for player one. Now let's do the same thing for player two. We can just duplicate this. Move it over. The only thing we'll have to change is we're listening for player two scored. And now we can test our game. And as you can see, the computer just scored a point and their counter just went up. Let's actually create another label and put it in the center of the screen so that we can have a countdown for this ball when it's waiting it's three seconds. So we'll just create a label We're going to start off empty, so no text, but we're going to change this font color to white. Super simple. Let's just add some behaviors. We're going to wait for a message saying we've reset. And then we're going to count down three seconds. And then after three seconds, we want the label to disappear. So we're just going to set the label again to no text, so empty. And since we want this to happen, not just when we reset, but also at the start of a new game, we can just add a behavior bundle. So now if we start a game, we have this three second countdown which disappears after the three seconds. Now what we want to do is if we go to our overlays and we go to our game over screen. We have game over, but it would be nice if we can actually say which player won. So what we can do is let's rename this to player one wins. When player one wins, we're going to have a little message. Let's set this to white. We're not going to restart. We can take this out. We can just go straight to the main menu. We can actually call this end of match. And now we have our player one wins game over. We can actually duplicate that and do the same thing for player two. So we'll just rename this. And we'll have a little message saying player two wins. So now, if we go back to our game scene, we can go to our score from earlier. Player 1 already goes to the player 1 wins, and we just check the player 2 score, and we want it to go to player 2 wins. So now we have a game over screen that says which player wins. Now, when player two scores a point, we should actually have the ball being served towards player two, because right now the ball is always served towards player one. So we can change that in the ball behaviors.
So what we can do is we can have an execute sequence. And we can also put a box container, which will just keep track of who's serving. So we'll just call this serve direction. This execute sequence, we can actually change To random. And this is going to be just for the first round when no player has scored yet. So we can create two input fields. From the serve direction. This will be a negative one, and this one will be a one. So it's random if it serves to player one or player two. And what we're going to do is for this apply force, which is the initial serve. Instead of having our negative one, which is always player one, we can now use our new serve direction. Now if we test our game, we can see it served to player one the first time. And if we try again, it serves to player two. So now that first serve is random, but what we want is for when a player scores, it should be serving towards them on the next round. So that's easy to do. What we can do is create another set input field on the serve direction. Drag this over to where we detect our collisions. So this is when player 2 scores, in which case we should be serving towards player 2. And when player 1 scores, we should be serving towards player 1. So we can test this really quickly. Player 2 just scored, and now it serves towards player 2, just as we expected. Now that we have scores in our games and we can detect who wins, it's time just to add a few finishing touches. Let's first start by adding a pause button, so we can go back to the scene. And we're just going to go to Scene UI Layer, and then we can create a special object. Let's create a label. It's going to be our pause button, so we can just put pause here. And we'll just change the text to white. Make sure the alignment is centered. And then we can just move this a bit. 
and then we can start adding some behaviors for when it's clicked. Behavior, so we want to detect when they tap the pause button, so let's add a started touching. And when that happens, what we want to do is load the pause overlay that comes with the project, this pause menu. You can put a transition here. Let's actually check out the pause menu that came with the default project. It's an overlays, pause menu. Let's just change these text colors to white. We have a resume, a restart, and a main menu. Let's actually take out the restart. And we're just going to rename this main menu to end match. And we can also set all of these to white. So when they pause, they have the option to either resume or go back to the main menu by ending the match. Let's actually test this. So we have our pause button and we can resume or we can go to main menu. Now let's create a quit button in the main menu. So we'll go to the main menu scene. Let's move some of these things up. And we can create a new label. We'll call this quit. That was a mistake. We'll call this one quit. We'll just change that text color to white. Alignment, center as always. And all we're going to do in the behaviors is when you start touching, we can quit project. Super quick, we can test this out. Yeah. Now the last thing is in the main menu, we see these two joysticks. We shouldn't be able to see them. We should only see them once the game actually starts. So what we can actually do is once we leave there, we can actually go to this title here and just add a behavior that hides those two joysticks. Make sure you're in the global UI layer We'll just hide those. So now when you are in the main menu and you start the game, you don't see those joysticks anymore. But when you click, they appear in the game mode. And now we're done the basic game. There's a lot more you can do to make this game more complex. For example, you could add different difficulties for the AI. But really, you can just play around and have fun with it. Thank you all for watching, and please don't forget to participate in our November event happening right now. All participants get a free t-shirt. Thank you.